Hello, beautiful homemakers. Welcome or welcome back to our exclusive YouTube podcast, Homemakers Arise. Ladies, I am absolutely delighted to have you here tuning in today. If you are listening, that means that the Lord woke you up this morning and that is more than enough to simply say thank you, Jesus, for. So ladies, this is a homemaking podcast, okay? So that means you are to listen while you work. I want you to be getting something done during this time. Whether that is getting ready for the day, whether that is making your bed or making a meal, loading a load of laundry, folding a load of laundry, some cleaning done or decluttering, whatever it is that you are able to do, I want you to be doing something while being encouraged and edified in the Lord. Hallelujah. So today, ladies, I just want to remind you all to be your husband's biggest cheerleader. Ladies, ladies, are you cheering your man on? Are you building up his confidence? Are you encouraging his heart? Are you comforting him? Are you loving on him? Are you speaking life into him? Or are you being what we spoke about in our last episode, the contentious woman, the contentious wife? If you ladies have not checked out that episode, please check that out first. I will have that episode linked in the description box below. But ladies, we want to make sure that we are not being contentious women, right? We want to be the type of wives that are consistently speaking life into our husbands. Proverbs 18, 21 tells us ladies that death and life are in the power of the tongue and that they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. What we speak matters, ladies. We are reminded again in Proverbs 31, verse 26, she opens her mouth in skillful and godly wisdom. And on her tongue is the law of kindness, giving counsel and instruction. Ladies, our speech, our speech matters. What are you saying to your husband? Ladies, let me tell you, whew, wait a minute. Jesus, the Holy Spirit just illuminated this. I went from Proverbs 18, chapter 18 to Proverbs 31, just off the top of my head, thinking about those two scriptures. But then I actually looked in the Bible, in the word of God, and right under Proverbs 18, verse 21, where it says, death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they who, the Amplified Classic version says, they who indulge in it shall eat the fruit of it for death or life. And then verse 22, literally the next verse says, he who finds a true wife, I love Amplified says true. He who finds a true wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. Wow. Wow. Ladies, literally. Oh my goodness. The Holy Spirit is so. Oh my goodness. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Ladies, literally right under Proverbs 18, 21, that talks about death and life, how it's in the power of our tongue. The next scripture says, he who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. It's the following scripture. And we just got finished yesterday speaking about the contentious woman and how it's, it's better for a man to be on the corner of a rooftop exposed to all types of weather than to be under the same roof of a nagging, quarrelsome, fault-finding woman, a contentious, angry woman. What comes out of our mouths matters. So when our husbands have a virtuous woman, right? A virtuous woman, a virtuous wife, she is going to be a wife that speaks life. Ooh, <laughs> a wife that speaks life. <laughs> Hallelujah. Are you a wife that speaks life or are you speaking death to your husband? We know what speaking death does. We see it with the contentious woman. It literally destroys 
your husband. If you are a contentious wife, you are a danger. You are a threat to your husband, not to the enemy. No, a contentious woman is a friend of the enemy. Mm. Yeah. A contentious woman is doing the work of the enemy, being used by the enemy to destroy her own husband. My God. And so we don't want to be those women. Right. Even in the last episode, the Holy Spirit led me to pray at the end of the message. So I really encourage you, like I said, if you have not listened to that podcast, please do, because that is the type of woman that we want to avoid being at all costs. We don't want to be those women, but we want to make sure that we are speaking life into our husbands, that we are speaking the word of God into them, that we are encouraging them. Ladies, have you stopped believing in your husband? Has the stress of life and of the world and of all the things that it takes to manage a home, has that caused you to speak death into your husband, to speak it into the atmosphere, to stop encouraging him and believing in him? Do you still believe in his dreams? Do you still believe in the vision that he has for your family that the Lord has given him, that he's shown him? Or are you sabotaging the vision. Here we are, praise the Lord, in 2024, January 2024, we're in a brand new year. We're in a year that we've never seen before and that we'll never see again, right? We're in a brand new year, a brand new season, a brand new opportunity. And it's so important for us to be on one accord with our husbands for us as a unit to be on one accord with the lord to be in proper alignment to be in submission hallelujah and so ladies we have so much impact on our households in our marriages in our families with what comes out of our mouth how are you using your tongue how are you using your tongue because we know according to the word of god that death and life are in the power of the tongue. And we know that a wise woman builds her house. A foolish one tears it down. But the wise woman is the one who opens her mouth in skillful and godly wisdom. And it says on her tongue, hallelujah, on her tongue is the law of kindness, giving counsel and instruction on her tongue. And then we see the power of the tongue. Death and life lie in the power of the tongue. Your tongue is more powerful than you think, woman of God. Your tongue is more powerful than you think. And so that tongue can either speak life into your family and cause you to build your house Or it can be speaking death and literally cause you to destroy everything around you. Are you being a good steward over your family with your tongue? Are you being a good steward with your marriage, with your tongue? Or are you literally destroying it by death with your tongue? My God. Is your tongue... A weapon or is it a witness? How are you using it? Are you using it for the glory of God? Or are you using it to further Satan's agenda? How are you using your tongue? Are you your husband's biggest cheerleader? Or are you his biggest critic? Because let me tell you something, ladies. Our men... They need us to speak life into them. They need us to love on them. There's power in that. That's that's a favorable wife right there. That's favor. Remember I shared with you ladies how my husband and I like watching the Rocky movies together. We love the Rocky movies. And he put me on that. And so it's something that is very special to us. There is a scene in one of the films, I can't remember off the top of my head which particular uh, numerical number of the Rocky franchise that this is. 
But in one of the movies, I believe it's Rocky IV, but in one of the movies, he is about to take on a serious challenge. The opponent that he's facing, I'm going to try to say it without putting too many spoilers in it if you haven't seen it. But the opponent that he's facing has, I'll just say, already taken a lot from him. A lot. And he is gearing up to face this man. And his wife doesn't want him to do so. And he's so passionate about it. He feels like he has to do this. He needs to do this. And you can feel the tension, right? And he loves his wife so much. And she shouts out and says, you can't win. <laughs> Woo. Lord, she says, you can't win. And the look on his face, the look in his eyes speaks volumes. And he says, his wife's name is Adrian. He says, Adrian always tells the truth. And later you see as he's training for this fight and he leaves his wife and that's the note that they leave on with her saying that he's defeated in his spirit. His whole spirit is broken down and he is absolutely defeated and you're looking like oh my goodness like it just looks like he's just giving up before he even steps foot into the ring right he's not even in the ring yet he's given up he's broken but his wife I love this part because his wife comes out to where he is at this point he's in another country preparing for the fight and his wife comes out she surprises him and she comes out there and she encourages him. She comforts him. She, watch this, speaks life into him. And literally you see this man become who he already was deep down inside. She breathes that life into him. And I share that analogy because I wanted to give an example of how crucial our belief in our husband is, how crucial our tongue is, right? And what comes out of it? Because when she spoke that, that was like death to his spirit. And he knew he had such a respect and reverence for his wife. He, he's like, I know my wife is, she's always honest with me. She tells the truth, like he says, right? So that hurt him. I think that that probably was one of the hardest blows that he took was hearing that thing that spoke death into him through his wife. And granted, in the movie, guys, we know why. If you've seen it before, you know, you know why she said that in different things. So I'm not here to like, pick apart the movie in that way of why they put certain things in there. But in relation to us as wives and wives who speak life or speak death to our husbands, I wanted to create a visual that you all can just kind of think up to see, wow, what happens when a wife speaks death into her husband? When you tell him, you're not good enough. When you look and tell him, you don't make enough money. You're, you're not taking care of me well enough. I, I want a Gucci bag and all you can afford is, is Michael Kors or all I can get is the, the bag from Walmart. This is, this is not enough. Yeah, we have a, a home, but my friend her and her husband, they just bought a house that it's 5,000 square feet and we live in this measly 1,300 square feet home. This is not enough space. You expect me to be happy in this? Mm. Or it can be more subtle. It can be your husband trying to better himself and maybe wants to further his education. And you say, honey, don't you think you're a little too old to be taking courses? Maybe you're poking fun of him. 
telling him he doesn't do it right. He doesn't know what he's doing. And mm, the Holy Spirit is even showing me that a lot of women, you don't even realize it can be in ways, the enemy can be using you in ways that you think are harmless. For instance, the stuff that you say on social media. I shared with you ladies before, I think it might have been in my e-guide, it, it might have been on a video, but I share with you, I won't go into full detail, but basically where a woman that I knew would always post these uh, pictures of things in her home like for instance, the laundry basket, the laundry basket was in the bathroom and it might've been some socks that was left next to the laundry basket. And she would post a picture online and then say, oh my goodness, he's like a fourth kid in this house. The laundry basket is just right here, but instead he puts his socks right next to it. Ladies, any other ladies have this problem with their husbands? Why can't they just get it right? Why can't they just... Just put the socks in the hamper. Is it that hard? I mean, my two-year-old can do that. It's the emasculation of your husband. The demeaning, the disrespect, and the disregard for his feelings. That is the death to his spirit. Because see, when you do things like that, Baby, you're a dangerous woman. You are disrespecting him. You're dishonoring him. You are dis... Jesus. Ooh, Holy Spirit. You are dismembering him. You are literally... Oh my God. Ooh, oh my goodness. The Holy Spirit is illuminating so much to me. You are dismembering him. When we talk about a wise woman building her house, I want you to think about your, your house, your body, your temple. You are one with your husband. So when you do that, you are literally taking it apart with your hands. You're dismembering your husband with your mouth. You are dismembering your man. And that Ladies, that is a, that's a slow death. When people are tortured, and I'm going to say this without being too graphic, right? When somebody wants somebody to suffer, if you're being tortured and, and they want you to suffer, they're not just going to, you know, get it over with just quick right then and there. No, they're going to slowly pick you apart because they want you to feel that pain. The enemy wants us to slowly and over the years and over the months and he wants you to pick apart your husband. He wants you to dismember him with your words. He wants you to dismember him with your actions. He wants you to do that and just slowly pick him apart until there's nothing left. But guess what? We come to serve notice to Satan today, not today, not now, not tomorrow, not ever, because we are wise women. Glory be to God. And if you don't have wisdom, my sister, if you've been a foolish woman, if you've been operating in a foolish way, repent and turn away from your wicked ways. God can redeem you. He can deliver you. He can restore you. He can restore your marriage. Hallelujah. It's not too late. So make sure you are a life-giving wife. Be the life-giving wife. Be the favor from the Lord to your husband. You are a gift, my beautiful sister. Be the woman that builds her house up. Be the woman that speaks life into her husband. Be his favor. Proverbs 3 verse 33 says the curse of the Lord is in and on the house of the wicked, but he declares blessed, joyful, and favored with blessings, the home of the just and consistently righteous. Woo! Holy Spirit is just connecting these scriptures for me. 
because we talk about the wise woman, right? Building her house. We talk about how it's better for a husband to be on the corner of a rooftop exposed to all kinds of weather versus being in the house with a nagging, contentious wife, right? We talk about that. And then we see how the curse of the Lord is in and on the house of the wicked. The contentious woman is a wicked woman. My God. Who, ladies, if they don't give you chills, if they don't convict you, I don't want to be a contentious woman ever. Lord, make me meek. Make me, make me gentle. Hallelujah. Because I don't ever want to be a contentious, nagging, quarrelsome, fault finding woman. I don't want to be that. We don't want to be that, ladies. Ladies, the curse of the Lord is in. My, the curse of the Lord is in and on the house of the wicked. So when you have a wicked wife, a contentious wife that is just quarrelsome and nagging and angry and fault finding and just mm, at the mouth, just mm, 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 all day long, all night long, every season long, every circumstance, just contentious, right? Over and over again. In that home, the curse of the Lord is in that home. It's on that home of the wicked. It's a wicked woman dwelling there. The woman is so wicked in her spirit that it's better for the husband to be on the roof in the midst of a tornado, in the midst of a storm, than to be in a house with this wicked woman. My God. Because God says in this, but he declares blessed. The home of the just and consistently righteous. Hallelujah. So do you have a wicked home or do you have a blessed home? Because what's on your tongue is going to declare the prosperity or the lack thereof in your home in the sense of spiritually, my sister. Are you all prospering spiritually in your home? Or has your home become a graveyard because of your tongue? Hallelujah. Which one is it? Which one is it? Y'all, I'm, I'm passionate. Y'all know I get, I, I'm, <laughs> I'm trying to calm down. But I'm so passionate about the word of God, about the living, true word of God, my sisters. So when I'm talking, when I'm talking to y'all like <laughs> And I'm talking about the word of God and I start getting all pumped up and stuff. Y'all, I'm, I'm just excited about the word and I'm just excited that the Holy Spirit is illuminating things in his word to us, to show us ourselves, to show us the plans of the enemy, to show us what the enemy desires for us, how he desires to sift us as wheat, but how we can gain wisdom from his word. He's also showing us wisdom in his holy word, skillful and godly wisdom so that we do not become those corrupt women the enemy wants us to become. We are not going to do that. Not on my watch. If you're on this channel, if you come to this channel to get any type of encouragement or edification, you will not, in the name of Jesus, become this wicked woman. And if you are, then repent and turn from your wickedness, my sister. It's not too late. Hallelujah. It's not too late. Just lift your hands and say, Lord, I have been a wicked woman. I have been a contentious woman. I've been quarrelsome. I've been nagging. I've been fault finding. I've been death speaking. But Lord, I repent for my wicked ways. I ask you to cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Remove any and all unclean spirits from me and fill me with your Holy Spirit. Renew my mind, cleanse my heart, and give me an appetite for righteousness and holy living. Help me 
to be the virtuous woman that you have called me to be according to your word. I thank you for renewing me, for delivering me, and I trust you to walk with me as a wife, as a mother, as a homemaker, and as your daughter. Lord, please give me your wisdom. In the mighty name of Yeshua HaMashiach, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 And just rejoice. Just thank the Lord for all that he's done. Thank him for what he has just done. Thank him for deliverance. Thank him for his goodness, his faithfulness, his mercies that are brand new every single morning. So even if this morning when you woke up, you didn't start the morning well, sister, you can change that. There's mercy for you in today. If yesterday wasn't a good day, there's mercy for you today. There is grace. So we are not condemned in Christ, okay? but we can be transformed. And we thank him for the transformation that is taking place. So I want you ladies to be encouraged. Let's be pumped because we are life giving wives. We are life speaking wives. Our women who have skillful and godly wisdom. Hallelujah. So I love you beautiful homemakers. You guys can probably hear my baby Caleb. He is he is doing a whole gymnastics course in my arms right now. Yes, looky. Mm. Say bye-bye. Okay, I'll talk to you ladies later. So I love you ladies so much. Be encouraged. Rise and shine. Homemakers, arise.